when we think of America, what do we think of? Bald eagles, baseball, the Super Bowl. I can guarantee you didn't think of this. America is the world's large has the world's largest prison population, which even though America covers 5% of the world's entire population, it houses 25% of the world's criminals. And 50% of those are solely related to drug charges. This extremely vast population leaves, um, it includes people that have been involved with drugs but not necessarily in a violent way. So these people, have they have a way of putting them in prison which is called a mandatory minimum sentence, which is a sentence that every person uh, that is convicted of a certain kind of a crime has to serve a minimum number of years in prison. Uh, again, as someone who is going to be a future law enforcer, and as someone who has been affected by, has a, had a family member that was affected by uh, mandatory minimums, I have done extensive research on the topic and am very knowledgeable about it. So by explaining the problems and causes of mandatory minimums and proposing some solutions, hopefully I can persuade you all to uh, support the repeal of mandatory minimum sentences for nonviolent drug offenses. But before we can fix a broken system, we first need to recognize the problems. According to the Federal Bureau of Prison, since Congress made uh, developed the mandatory minimum sentencing system in the 1980s, the population of prisons has risen from has risen from uh, four drug offenders has risen from 24,000 to 214,000 uh, 214, inmates, which is a 89 percent increase. And of this 89 percent increase. 50% of them have no history of violence whatsoever. They just haven't had drugs on them. But the reason this number is so high is not because there is so many people doing it. It's because that the minimum for uh, nonviolent drug offenses is extremely high, especially compared to other crimes. Uh, which means that it keeps prisoners in prison for a longer amount of time and it allows it to build up. This is extremely um, detrimental to our prison system because it has caused a massive overcrowding in our prison system and um, that is a massive drain on our resources and our money as a government. But just how long are the, is the mandatory minimum for non-filing drug offenses? Um, on the website, Families Against Mandatory Minimums, uh, they posted April, uh, April 2013, they stated that a non-filing drug offense, including just simply possession of a drug, or, um, which can be from 200 grams of cocaine or heroin, which is basically this small uh, can of baking flour, uh, that can get you from 10 to 15 years in prison. Whereas the mandatory min or the average sentence for rape or sexual assault is six to seven years. So, which begs the question, what kind of just system allows a nonviolent offense to be have the same, even remotely the same sentence as something as disgusting as rape? Now that you're aware of the problems that uh, mandatory minimums face, uh, the causes. 
Florida State Law Review Journal states that mandatory minimums started in the 1950s, but it wasn't until the Reagan administration that they started to focus on drugs. And after 1951, uh, Reagan had a crackdown on uh, drug offenses, and he basically wanted to destroy the U.S. drug trafficking ring and calm the public paranoia of drugs at the time, which um, gave us the Omnibus Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1988, which is the foolproof plan that we have today. Uh, another cause of mandatory, mandatory minimum sentences is uh, illustrated in Community-Based Corrections by Leanne Allard. Uh, it's the declined use of interdeterminate sentences which happened in the 1970s. Um, this uh, type of sentencing basically allowed uh, judges to just determine who was going to go to prison and allowed parole boards to uh, um, tell them when they could leave. Uh, but the public saw this as more lenient towards the criminals and they wanted a more harsh way to punish them. So they adopted the mandatory minimum um, sentencing. Uh, in order to solve continuously growing issue, uh, we first need to step back and rethink what we define as justice. Yes these, yes, these people broke the law, and yes, they deserve to be in prison for it. But should they be in prison for a large portion of their life for something that they didn't cause any harm to anyone else, deliberately? Um, we first must reconsider what it means to have a just punishment. Uh, another way to combat um, the mandatory minimum system is through the passing of the Sentencing Reform Act of 2015, which would allow judges to bypass the uh, mandatory minimum system and uh, allow themselves to uh, create a sentence that would be more fitting for the crime. Uh, in the LA Times Post in October 2015, it said that this would be a better way to justly fit the crime. Uh, in conclusion, uh, I uh, talked about the problems and causes of mandatory minimum sentencing and gave you some solutions to back up my claim. Um, though I have, I believe I am a man of the law, and though I have my full faith in the law, I can see when the system is broken and needs to be mended by a younger generation that's more progressive. Thank you.